Whether you grow your tomatoes and other ingredients in the garden like we do, or buy them at the store, I'm going to show you in two minutes how to make tomato sauce from scratch. You'll never buy jarred sauce again. And the best thing is, no special tools required. Stay tuned. In my opinion, a recipe is nothing more than a guideline, and I'm going to show you the process and ingredients, but ultimately the quantities are up to you based on your tastes. We prefer to use a plum tomato, like a Roma or a San Marzano, where the meat to seeds and liquid ratio is a lot higher than other varieties. The first step is to blanch your tomatoes to remove the skin. To start, what you'll need is a pot of boiling water a container of ice water to cool them off in, and lastly, another container to put your skin tomatoes in. To blanch your tomatoes, bring a pot of water to about approximately a boil. Cut a small cross in the bottom of the tomato, the opposite end of where it was growing on the stem, and drop it in the water. Wait for the skins to start cracking and peeling away from the tomato, and then you can pull them out of the water, and place them in the ice water to cool. You can peel the skin away and you should be left with just a bare tomato that's meat and pulp. You'll notice I'm coring over a mess strainer inside of this bowl. So when that strainer is full, if you come on in and you work the material that's in here squeezing out all the pulp and juice and pushing it through the strainer, you can remove all of the juice and save as much of the tomato as you can. Adding the juices into the tomatoes that you've been coring. What we have here is one full medium sized onion chopped up and about five cloves of garlic. We, we're going to start our sauce or in an Italian household we call it gravy with some extra virgin olive oil in the pan first Add your garlic and your onions. This is going to be the base for your sauce. Cook these until they're translucent. While your onions and garlic are cooking, you can add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, season those up. Woo! Does that smell awesome? Time to add in some tomatoes. Now that you have all your tomatoes, cord and, and the meat separated, you can go ahead and start cooking them with your onions and garlic. And I, I like to use the, a potato smasher to help expedite the breaking down process. Continue to cook your sauce until it gets the desired consistency that you like. We happen to like our sauce nice and thick and chunky that you can stand a spoon up in it. At this stage I'm going to add some tomato paste. I'm putting two cans of paste into this size of a pot and I have yet to add any seasonings until the tomatoes have cooked down to a point where I'm satisfied with the consistency of the sauce itself. And in about the next hour or so, then I'll start to add some spices in. This recipe includes fresh basil. I like to stack my leaves, roll them up, take the knife and cut across the rib. And then if you just Come down and chop up the basil. You get a nice even consistency to add into your sauce. I have three teaspoons of Italian seasoning here, but I'm only going to put some in and we'll go till taste. And I have two teaspoons of oregano here and we're going to add some of that as well. And then we're going to stir it up and we're going to let the sauce cook for probably about another 45 minutes to let those seasonings blend together. 45 minutes has gone by. It's not quite enough spices in. We're going to add the rest of our oregano, our Italian seasoning. And we like a sweeter sauce, so we're going to add about three tables, teaspoons, excuse me, three teaspoons of sugar in, and then we'll taste from there. And we're going to also add a little extra virgin olive oil to give it a nice, silky, smooth texture. That's perfect. A couple of tips for you. I personally think that if you put the tomatoes in the refrigerator overnight and then make this a two day process, the cooling has changes the consistency and helps it to become thicker. Additionally, 
The amount of spices are ultimately going to depend on how acidic or how sweet your tomatoes are. So as mentioned, the recipe is only a guideline. If you like these types of videos and watch us take food from the farm and bring it into the kitchen and cook it, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share with your friends, and stay tuned because what's coming up next is the best Italian sausage you'll ever eat.